early Buddhism sort of divided things up this way. It said this is what we tend to identify with, physical body, pleasant versus unpleasant, uh, thoughts, habit forces, and consciousness itself. But if you divide it up, and then you subdivide, you can take the physicality of your body, and they didn't have modern chemistry, they didn't have the periodic table of the elements, what they had was the four classical elements, earth, water, air, and fire. They would break the experience of body into those elements. And that was a subdividing. So if you divide it all up, then you'll see it's just this stuff, and there's not a thing called a self here. My modern reworking of that is the focus in. Take, I take the core, what I would consider to be the core sense of self, which is feel, which is a, sort of related to the Vedana, um, and the image talk, which are definitely related to the Sanjnya. But it is possible to have a broader definition of self. It's body, mind, self. I find that uh, through feel, image, talk, you can... Yeah, you can get a, a, a sense of the unconscious forces. So anyway, same idea, but it's a little different because feel, image, talk are, all three of them are sensory events that uh, can be monitored in time. And so by, I find that if you can separate them out, then the somethingness of self goes away. And when they get conflated, or um, tangled together, then you get the illusion of self as thing. So the focus in is my reworking of um, the finding a spiritual self in the sense of becoming free from the limited identity with thought and feeling. My reworking of that divide and conquer, but instead of using the five aggregates, um, I just use the, the three um, subjective sensory uh, elements. So that's one way to, uh, uh, one strategy for finding a spiritual self. Focus out, you, is based on more of a Zen way of working. So you're having to work all day and you want to experience a merging with your environment. Well, focus out. Anchor and touch sight sound. Feel image talk to, it contracts, touch sight sound expands, easy to do, well, not easy, but natural to do as you're doing physical tasks. It's physical tasks all about touch sight sound. So you get the Confucian you get the Confucian ethical values of working with the Taoist um, uh, spiritual paradigm of merge with the outside world. So my focus out reworks <coughs> that strategy. Focus on rest is a reworking of the uh, absorption practices of early Buddhism. The idea there is you discover a restful self, actually a restful self in a restful world. I do that, the restful self is, instead of feel, image, talk, it's peace, blind, quiet. The restful world, instead of touch, sight, sound, it's relaxation, light, silence. So this forms an attenuated experience of self and world. Not quite the absolute no self and no world of the source, but moving in that direction. After all, the absorption practices are never claimed to be nirvana. But they're sort of moving in that direction. So the focus on rest is a reworking of that paradigm. Focus on positive, well, you're actively manipulating feel image talk. Clearly, this is related to things like the Brahma Viharas, the loving kindness practice and such of early Buddhism. It's also related to the deity yoga practices of much later Buddhism, the Vajrayana, what came after Mahayana. From my perspective, um, it's basically concentration, clarity, and equanimity in subjective space developed by actively manipulating subjective space as opposed to passively observing the way we do with focus in. But certainly if you are manifesting positive feel image talk, you know, 
I don't know that you, it will necessarily turn you into a money magnet, okay? <laughs> but it will turn you into a people magnet. That I can guarantee that, that people will be attracted to you and uh, that people will want to be with you and find you a source of comfort uh, and inspiration. A priest, Catholic priest, once asked my teacher, Sasaki Roshi, what his take on Christianity was. <laughs> And he said, um, <clears throat> well, it's about crucifixion and resurrection. I totally believe in crucifixion and resurrection. <laughs> Roshi said that, OK. <laughs> the priest is all happy. Oh, good. It's about crucifixion. Yeah. <laughs> you believe in resurrection? Absolutely. I totally believe in resurrection. <laughs> And he does, and crucifixion, okay? But his idea of crucifixion is uh, <clears throat> that uh, you get crucified <laughs> <laughs> by the source, okay? You get pinned and torn apart, stretched and nailed by the forces of expansion and contraction. The somethingness within you dies, but then is resurrected as positive feel image talk, a better self. Because you could you could go to the source, you could you could die. And it's like born again, but uh, big time born again, not little time born again. It's all about crucifixion and resurrection. <laughs> so focus on positive in its most advanced forms actually comes is the new life uh, that comes from the death that occurs through focus on change. <clears throat>